What's up guys, GCDZ here, back with another Let's Talk. Today we will be discussing the Supergirl Future Zen. Previously I said that I picked up Supergirl Future Zen because I liked seeing the motion cover turn from Supergirl into Cyborg Supergirl, which obviously tells us what the one shot will be about. Now just because I'm a Cyborg Superman fan doesn't mean I'm going to say it's the perfect comic. Everything has its ups and downs. First off, I love the artwork in this comic. Everything was beautiful. The background, the color, it all really stood out to your eye. Everything was beautifully done and you can tell that there was much thought put into the comic, page by page. Before opening the comic, I was expecting Cyborg Superman and Cyborg Supergirl to be going on a murderous rampage the whole time. But that wasn't the case. There was a course more. Now, I don't know if people are going to agree or disagree with this or not, but I felt that 2014 Supergirl Futures End one-shot in a way continued off the 2013 Cyborg Superman Action Comics one-shot. That Cyborg Superman one-shot was about Brainiac capturing Zor-El, turning him into Cyborg Superman to look for your superior species to make another Krypton since Krypton was doomed. So what was Supergirl Futures End about? The comic starts off with Cyborg Superman and Cyborg Supergirl floating in space seeking out the superior species to turn people into what they are and to rebuild their planet Krypton on that planet's soil. Doesn't that remind you of a movie that recently came out? If you said Man of Steel, then you are right. Remember Zod was trying to build Krypton on Earth soil? Well that's kind of what they're doing. However, he wasn't a badass Cyborg Zod. So going on, we see them flying around many planets looking for the right species and planet, destroying who isn't fit for the job. Then they find Earth. They see humans are intelligent, look like Kryptonians, and have a good enough planet to build Krypton on. Now I'm not going into full detail because it was really good and I'd hate to spoil everything, even though that's what comic fans do best. Cyborg Supergirl is confronted by someone and he breaks into her cyborg mind and tries to make her remember who she was. Yet her past life was blocked by Brainiac, who made Cyborg Superman as well. She realizes who she is and Cyborg Superman must not let her get her regular mind back, and he will use deadly force to do so. The rest of the story is for you guys to enjoy yourselves. One thing I liked was that they didn't make every page go further back into the past. Yeah, it was necessary for Grayson's future Zen, but I thought it was a good idea to do the regular continuation of page by page. Supergirl throughout the story is trying to figure out just who she is. Her alias is Herald 2 and Cyborg Superman is Herald 1. Why Herald? I have no clue. But we can conclude that Brainiac gave him those names. Now as we know, Cyborg Superman is a ruthless, pitiless, and feels no remorse kind of being. He was created to do one thing and one thing only to find a superior species and planet and destroy those who fight back or ones that are not superior enough. We've seen this in the death of Superman, the Aftermath graphic novel, and also in 2013's Cyborg Superman comic. He has no problem destroying anybody. However, Supergirl seems to have somewhat of a heart and soul in that cybernetic body of hers. When finally getting her conscience back, she starts to question who Cyborg Superman is. She says, you are a Kryptonian, I can see your DNA, but what was your name? She asks him this a couple of times, yet he never answers her with the response she wants and the ones that we want. But if you already know, then you don't need him to answer. I already know, however, I'll let you guys find out. He kind of gives her this hint, yet she doesn't know still. He says a couple of words that give it off. He says, you are like my offspring, I created you. So going into the dialogue, I thought one thing the authors should have done was make Cyborg Superman and Cyborg Supergirl talk more like, well, cyborgs. The dialogue was a little too human-like, kinda like my voice right now. They didn't seem really cyborg at all, even for Cyborg Superman. Now Cyborg Supergirl was just recently turned into part cyborg, so we can I guess kind of expect this dialogue from her. Going from this, yes, Cyborg Superman did turn Supergirl into a cyborg during a fight with him in space. Now even though Supergirl is no Superman, you can never ever underestimate her. She's even brought Darkseid to the ground. Yet, of course, you wouldn't die. She's became one of the most dangerous Red Lanterns to ever exist as well. So, you can really see just how powerful she is. So, while the action going on between Cyborg Superman and Cyborg Supergirl are going on, Supergirl can hurt him, yes. Yet, there's one flaw. Cyborg Superman can manipulate her cybernetic body and control it to use the weapons in herself to destroy herself. That to me is a really cheap move and pretty much he can just destroy her in an instant. You could probably make her rip off her own head if you wanted to. I mean that must suck so bad. The action in the comic is pretty good. Of course they gotta have story put into it, even a brief love story, but I felt they needed to be a little more action. 
Cyborgs can use and have many abilities from being what they are, as in being able to control technology, grow their cyber arms, power, heat vision, and strength, etc. Yet all we saw was a strength and heat vision use. The action was somewhat minimal. The love story was brief yet good on length. It summed up Supergirl's and Captain Comet's love pretty well. Captain Comet's role in the comic is to help Cyborg Supergirl remember who she was before, trying to breach that cybernetic wall to her mind. One thing that comes to mind when reading this is why couldn't these one-shotters be longer? If these one-shots only come out once a year, the creators could have at least gave the one-shots a minimum of 10 more pages, especially for this Supergirl comic because it was really good and I would have loved to see a little bit more along the story. It's not so much that the story leaves you on a cliffhanger, but more like, oh man, the story's already over. But I do give props for making this well-put little story into one comic issue. I think of it along the lines of, if you make a good quick story like that, they can make a good long-term story off of it. I would have especially loved to read a long-term Cyborg Supergirl comic series. I mean, they already made a Red Daughter of Krypton series, or should I say add-on. Might as well make her a cyborg as well, because I really recommend this story, and they could have at least, you know, tried to make it into a comic series. It would have been cool, because also if they would have continued having Cyborg Superman in the comic, then it would be like, quote-unquote, father and daughter bond time. Well, thanks guys for watching. Tune in next time for another Let's Talk. I'll probably be doing the first issue on the new Lady Thor series for Marvel. So I'll see you soon. Later, dudes.